Hello there, very good evening to all of you and once again we are meeting with another episode of IMED. We've been talking about cancers and today also we're going to talk about a specific cancer, a type of carcinoma which has been affecting um, when it comes to our digestive tract, bowel cancers or bowel carcinomas. It can appear in different parts of your bowel. So do the honours to talk about this, to give you information on this topic we do have with us today, Dr. Ranil Jayasena, consultant gastrointestinal surgeon. Good evening to you, Good Doctor. Good evening. So carcinomas or other bowel cancers, uh, it has been common in the society, isn't it? Yeah, actually it is the third commonest cancer in male and female both. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, this uh, 2019, mm -hmm. that, that year they have detected about 2130 or, uh, patients. Alone in uh, Sri Lanka. In Sri Lanka. On Sri Lanka. Uh, but it is different in other, other countries, but I am talking about Sri Lankan statistics. And uh, again, there is a reason for that. Because the causative factors are related to again food and some uh, carcinogenic substances in food or drinks. Uh, there are various other causes we will discuss later, uh, but it is mainly due to uh, carcinogens. The carcinogen means the, the substance which stimulate and irritate the mucosa to develop. A Cancer. cancer and uh, actually it is uh, very uh, common in uh, old age group mm -hmm. between 70 and 74 is the highest incidence is there a specific reason for that uh, actually it is due to uh, you know, some other uh, problems in that age group uh, constipation and bowel inactivity uh, the, the travel time is shortened in the, those patients therefore the bubble mucosa is exposed more to these carcinogenic substances in that age group. Mm -hmm. Some other uh, comorbid factors, diabetes, diabetes, diabetes also there is a, some neurological problem where the bubble motility is less. Mm -hmm. uh, those factors also have been discussed, but some factors could be uh, you know, confirmed, mm -hmm. but they assume this could be this could be due to that maybe you know other comorbid factors as well and also the bacterial uh, colonies in the gut right. that they, that also play a important role and mainly is the constipation uh, is the main cause of uh, development of bowel cancer. Okay, what are the other symptoms of uh, bowel cancer? Yeah, actually uh, we discussed this subject uh, as colorectal cancer. Now, rectum is, com is a different uh, part, colon is another part, but uh, most of the co causative factors are common. But uh, when you get symptoms and signs and uh, the techniques of treatment mm -hmm. methods, all these things, when it comes to it could be different. The rectal carcinoma may be managed separately and the colonic cancer in a different way. But because the causative factors are in common, we call it colorectal cancer. Uh, the symptoms also depend on the site of the cancer. Now, suppose uh, the cancer you get in the rectum, uh, that is also in different parts. They, we divide the rectum into uh, upper, middle and lower rectum. The, the, the symptoms uh, you get in lower rectal cancer is different from the upper, upper rectal, rectal cancer. cancer. Because lower rectum, uh, there is a fullness there. Patient feels uh, some incomplete evacuation because he thinks that we have to go to toilet several Once times again. because he has not emptied it fully. Mm -hmm. But he feels that due to the presence of, could be due to the presence tumor. of tumor there. Therefore, uh, the, the, the we call it pre, uh, feeling of incomplete evacuation. And also, you get a symptom called tenesmus, where a patient goes to toilet and strain, but uh, he won't pass tools, but little bit of mucus may be mixed with blood and patient come back. That is called tenesmus. tenesmus. Those are very alarming symptoms actually. You should pay attention and mm -hmm. get uh, you know, a consult 
டாக்டர் அண்ட் இந்த அப் கோலோனிக் டியூமர்ஸ் சிம்டம்ஸ் ஆக்சுவலி டெவலப் லிட்டில் லேட் யூனோ பிகாஸ் தேர் இஸ் டயமீட்டர் இஸ் மோ டு கோஸ் எனி காம்ப்ளிகேஷன் ஓ ஒப்ஸ்ட்ராக்ஷன் ஓ சம்திங் இட் வில் இட் ஹேஸ் டு பி இட் ஹேஸ் டு க்ரோ லிட்டில் பட் சம் பேஷன்ஸ் ஆர் லக்கி டு கெட் அ காம்ப்ளிகேஷன் நோ சப்போஸ் டியூ டு தட் பொலிப் which is already a cancer or precancerous stage sometimes due to that polyp cancerous polyp or precancerous polyp you get uh, the, the twisting of bowel mm-hmm. or uh, telescoping of bowel into the other part because of the presence of that polyp right then you get a complication obstruction patient come with vomiting or sometimes there is a uh, bleeding from that then patient get alarmed and come and to find it may be a early lesion that actually that patient is little lucky, lucky. right to because he get a com- to get a complication yeah. like that. then at early stage we can uh, offer a complete cure and b- only thing is the, there is a di- there the there is a dilated part in the bowel called cecum that is the beginning of the colon, colon. that is little balloon like thing and when you get a tumor there it takes long time to grow and cause in your obstruction or uh, something like that or even it bleeds the blood get mixed with stool and you patient won't notice therefore the patient who has odd symptoms like the bloated feeling loss of weight loss of appetite but without any uh, evidence of tumor Uh, no bleeding no obvious bleeding then uh, actually when the patient comes and tell us we if the patient is anemic uh, sometimes patient may complain that he gets you know difficulty breathing when you walk mm-hmm. and patient is anemic without any reason mm-hmm. then you have to suspect it could be that especially that age group about Six 40 about. now actually it's about 45 mm-hmm. because it is becoming common in the young age groups therefore yeah, even now those days we used to say they both 65 and know that but now we have to advise patients to you know be more cautious when they get at age even at the age of 45 right is is becoming more and more common mm-hmm. and uh, we, we call it occult blood right because it is hidden with the stools therefore we the patient patients with those symptoms and uh, you know uh, anemia without any uh, obvious cause we um, test for occult blood that is blood hidden in the stool if it is positive definitely you have to do a uh, colonoscopy now actually uh, uh, we are again fortunate to have some Uh, special techniques where you can uh, detect those things uh, not like those days and uh, we have i will show it oh, sorry it's it is already there and uh, this is also a very flexible uh, tube mm-hmm. where you c- uh, you insert it through the rectum. rectum and you can go up to the uh, cecum that the that is the beginning the first of the part, beginning of the colon not even beyond that we mm. can go into the la, uh, no, uh, uh, part that a part of the, part of the small bubble that is the um, uh, ilia that is called ilia you you can go that terminal part of the ilia and then you can detect a lesion or abnormality or precancerous lesion sometimes uh, then you, you can take a biopsy if you have any suspicion that it could be a malignancy and if it already there is a complication like bleeding you can uh, attend to it that you call it therapeutic colonoscopy mm-hmm. usually it is a diagnostic colonoscopy where you get this and you symptoms in that age group and you when you suspect that this could there could be colorectal cancer you are straight away you can do a colonoscopy and uh when you know that there is a problem like that you can you can remove it sometimes if the lesion is small that becomes the therapeutic colonoscopy and uh, symptoms actually uh, very vague very vague uh it becomes obvious 
unfortunately when it is um, you know, too a big little or little late and uh, rectal carcinoma of course you can uh, get symptoms little early because of these symptoms I mentioned early bleeding you can see mm -hmm. but sometimes you know patient get confused with this hemorrhoids hemorrhoids, hemorrhoids yeah. yeah especially when when you are above 45 when you get bleeding per rectum you should not assume that it is due to hemorrhoids sometimes it you can get hemorrhoids and some lesion above okay. together okay. that hemorrhoids could be due to a tumor lying above because it can obstruct the veins in the bowel wall and which can cause hemorrhoids okay. therefore whenever there is bleeding and obvious hum, uh, uh, hemorrhoids but still as surgeons we exclude a malignant lesion above by doing a sigmoidoscopy or colonoscopy sometimes sigmoidoscopy may be enough because the 70 percent of the uh, malignant lesions occur in the left side of the bowel uh -huh. only 30 percent in the right side therefore sometimes it is uh, enough to do a sigmoidoscopy um, but nowadays because of the facility available and it can be done as a OPG case we exclude anything in the uh, bowel up to the ileum. So, so what are right. So, what are the uh, causative factors related to these kind of carcinomas? Uh, yeah, actually uh, as I mentioned earlier the carcinogens in the uh, stools usually is a residual part of the food. Mm -hmm. Hydrocarbons, nitrosamines, various things, these chemicals. That is why uh, it is not advisable to consume you know, uh, fast food fast food with you know uh, colors and uh, you know, preservative factor mm -hmm. uh, the ingredients those are not good because they actually what happens Natalia yeah. these are inactive when you eat these carcinogens are inactive when you get into the when that get into the bowel that inactive carcinogen get active due to the bacterial action in the colon. Mm -hmm. You know that there are bacteria yes. uh, which actually the protect the bowel, but sometimes this action of this bacteria unfortunately change the their inactive carcinogen actually into active, active ca carcinogen. And with the patient has uh, constipation, the uh, transit time is you know very low. Yeah, the slow movement, movement that carcinogen is exposed more to the mucosa therefore there is a high chance of getting a cancer that is why we advise people not to get constipated you know to treat it and if, if there is undue uh, delay in passing stools you have to uh, be very cautious and that is one yes. then um, uh, I will show this is this is a picture of uh, actually rectal cancer full blown uh, cancer it is very irregular mass lesion you can see there. Now this one this is a polyp mm -hmm. right it could be a solitary polyp when you do a colonosco col colonoscopy you may find just one polyp like that right but that polyp if you take a biopsy and uh, see under the microscope that will show uh, non malignant, but with various histological you know so changes, changes. You know, dysplasia, low grade dysplasia, uh, moderate or severe dysplasia like that. That means it is going to be a cancer mm -hmm. right it is a precancerous lesion. Therefore, any polyp we detect during colonoscopy we remove it or oh, at least we biopsy it and see. A small polyp now very easily it can be uh, what you call snared right mm -hmm. you put a loop there and burn it and take it out and send for acid storage if it is malignant you remove the bowel oh otherwise if it is dysplasia we do not remove the bowel but you have to do a colonoscopy every six months so after that every one year to see whether patient develop new polyps or there are there is a some development or change at the other site where we have removed the polyp.
you know that that you call follow up colonoscopy that patient has to be followed up mm -hmm. because there is a chance. chance oh but it could be just you know when you remove if patient is lucky nothing <laughs> more may happen but there is another condition that is also a, actually it is a etiological factor a polyp in the bowel now you can see several polyps there multiple, multiple. polyps you get sometimes millions of polyps what we, we call it polyposis coli when you get more than two polyps in the bowel you call it multiple polyposis or polyposis coli and this is uh, in 60 percent cases this is hereditary right therefore when you get that there is a chance after puberty uh, one of these polyp to undergo malignancy there is a 70 percent chance therefore after puberty we recommend removal of the bowel total colectomy and you know then you will ask how uh, what how will happen yeah, no, how do you uh, do you know, what you do is you have to restore the rectum sometimes you get polyps in the rectum mm -hmm. you have to remove the rectum and using this part of small bowel we make a you know rectum like you know pouch there uh -huh. there is a pouch it later it uh, you know slowly acquire the uh, function of rectum uh, this is a big operation because we have to remove the whole colon and with the small bowel parts you have to make a uh, pouch there uh, and also when you get that in one patient as I said it is hereditary yes. you have to check all family members you have to do a uh, colonos colonoscopy, colonoscopy that you call screening screening, screening colonoscopy because there is a chance you know if it is the male patient you know uh, to, um, 50 percent chance sometimes it is a uh, 25 percent chance you get in another family member then you have to remove the bowel or follow up very closely and do multiple biopsies and any change yeah, you have to remove the uh, colon. But still does it take time uh, to present as in like these polyps getting bigger and then only they present? Uh, yeah, sometimes they come with bleeding. Mm -hmm. uh, now if one person get problems then you know when you come to know it, it could be hereditary and doing endos colonoscopy and finding is a different issue. Yes. But uh, you know, uh, as you said patient uh, may, uh, may go low for a long time unnoticed because the patient may not develop any symptom. Yes. Right. Uh, because uh, it does not bleed that easily also and if it bleeds it is patient is lucky actually you know we, we in the, then it is detected very early and that is one of the uh, causative factors. So, what about the management uh, methods doctor like well, how can it be managed other than the surgery are there any medication? Uh, no. Nothing no, no medicine for, <laughs> for that well, the colorectal cancer is surgery right whether it is in the late, uh, late, late stage like you know it has spread to liver or the lymph nodes peritoneal cavity but you have to remove that tumor because it is going to obstruct that colon uh, very soon. Mm -hmm. Therefore, even it has spread now it, I mean the management is different from stomach cancer. Now, yes. if you get stomach cancer with liver secondary, you are not bothered to you know do the surgery there you, because you, you cannot help it. But in case of colon the, the diameter is very you know is a, a shorter than that and also there is a tendency to obstruct the bubble. Therefore, you, anyway you have to remove it or you have to do a, some colostomy, defunctioning colostomy to avoid that sort of complication. And uh, if you detect early, uh, sometimes it, it offer the patient uh, uh, 50 percent 5 years survival, we call it actually survival after the surgery. Surge after surgery. And uh, in case of uh, rectal cancer, it also depends on the site. Now, uh, if it is the low one third and you very close to the sphincter, you have to remove the, the rectum with the anal sphincter everything and put a colostomy there. Mm -hmm. You have to get a bowel externally. part externally and put a bag 
and then because we you know we can't preserve the sphincter there. But with the latest uh, technologies and instruments we have with some you know um, um, anastomosing, anastomosing techniques. Uh, now we can even uh, do restoring uh, anastomosis mm -hmm. sometime, but if it is very close to the anal uh, canal, uh, it is difficult. Uh, but without uh, colostomy, sometimes we manage. So can there be recurrence after a surgery? If they yes, yes. They have, they are, uh, that's why when during surgery we remove, we try to remove everything, uh, the the surrounding fat and uh, lymph nodes. Uh, some we have to ligate some vessels, and uh, and also after surgery uh, we resort to uh, give chemotherapy medicine, whatever we can't see there. There are some embolization mm -hmm. with the tumor emboli. You can get into the blood vessels and stuck there. Therefore, you have to do radiotherapy and try to minimize uh, the recurrence like that. But uh, despite that we can sometimes get a recurrence. So, what would be the take home message that we can give to our viewers finally? Yeah, uh, to avoid getting colorectal cancer, prevention of colorectal cancer means prevention of constipation mainly, right. You do not get constipated. You eat lot of fruit, drink lot of water, water. and uh, reduce mental stress and uh, get the bubble move. If you get the bubble move, you also can move. A very good message indeed that how you should maintain your health, especially with regards to your bubbles and your rectum and then how to avoid you or your family members, your loved ones um, get a cancer with regards to your digestive tract. We would like to thank Dr. Ranil Jayasena for being here with us today as well to bring you this information with regards to cancers. Consultant gastrointestinal surgeon, Dr. Ranil Jayasena. Thank you, doctor. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, we'll be meeting you with another episode of IMED next week as well. Till then, see you. Have a great week.